I'm Michael Danahy, and today is July 25, 2018. We're talking about Senate School from the years 1947 to 1955, a long way back. Senate School is where many miracles happened. No one knew, for instance, where I would end up when I, legally blind, started at center school. I got my start there. And now here I sit in Oxford, Mississippi, with a PhD from Princeton and national awards for teaching and research. Every day I'd leave the house 38 Grove Street and walk over to the common and begin school. Fast forward to now and I have circled the globe. I've lived and worked in a couple of dozen different countries. I began first grade in 1947. My teacher was Mrs. Smith. The classroom was located in the basement and for years afterwards in class whenever anyone wanted to go to the bathroom they'd raise their hand and ask permission to go to the basement because that's where they were at the time. Now I want to share with you an amazing coincidence about the first grade with Mrs. Smith. Every day we would sing a song. It went a little bit like this. You may be familiar with it. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. We're all in our places with bright, shiny faces. Oh, what a good way to start a new day. 
Good morning, Mrs. Smith. Now, you may have heard on one of these tapes Paul Danahy talking about when he was in Santa School in first grade in 1934, they same, sang the same song. But that's not the amazing coincidence. The amazing coincidence, fast forward 70 years. Here I sit way down south in the land of cotton. I was talking with a friend of mine, uh, Kay Larson. She grew up 30 miles south of Oxford, Mississippi in a t small town called Water Valley, Mississippi. And I was talking about that song. And every day she went to the first grade, her teacher had the same name, Mrs. Smith. She was about the same age as uh, I was when she began school. And they sang that same song. Don't things like that give us hope that this country can hang together? Now, I was not always happy with going to the first grade. What happened is I was the first child at my house. I was the oldest of four children. My mother had four children in four years and I felt a little bit like I was being kicked out of the house at five years of age. So I would run away from Santa school. I'd get across the common and maybe as far as the library when I felt a little down. So I'd sit on the library steps and pout across the street from Brown and Smith. At the intersection there of church, where T stops with Maine, on the other corner across from the library lived Mrs. Leslie P. Eagles. When she would spot me on the library steps, she would call our friend and neighbor Dot Pond. The Danahees didn't have a phone at the time. So the message went to Dot. Dot would come up the street to 38 Grove, tell my mother, and they'd come and get me. Now the second grade came and went. I don't have too many precise memories. Mrs. Johnson was the name of the teacher. And uh, what I do remember feeling in second grade was how much I really missed Mrs. Smith in the first grade. For the third grade, my teacher was Helena Deutsch. Her classroom was on the ground floor, the first floor, if you will. With your back to the common, you look at the building, and it was on the front side and to the right. What I remember about Helena Deutsch is that I was mesmerized, and kind of hypnotized, she was a lovely woman. She wore big, broad hats, something mysterious about her. She wore makeup and perfume, a sight to behold. And I was just intrigued by her. In the fourth grade, uh, my teacher was called Paul Barry. Now, I know from Facebook that lots of students have a unhappy memory of Paul Barry, an unhappy image, because they had unfortunate experiences with him. What I remember in the fourth grade were the spelling bees that he had. They were such fun, they were energizing, and they really motivated me to win. For the fifth grade, I had Miss Claire Sullivan. I knew Miss Sullivan because she was a uh, communicant at St. John's. She was in the choir and would sing at Mass on Sundays, and uh, she was very often the featured soloist for funerals, and I remember distinctly her very high-pitched, very mournful solos at funerals. She was also the sister-in-law of the principal, Bob Neelan. Her classroom was located on the second floor of the old center school. As you look at it, again, it was on the left and to, in the back corner. What I most remember about fifth grade is the very bad grade, the low grade I got in penmanship. Now imagine the old desks. You see them in pictures. It looks like a 
a, a box sitting atop cast iron legs that are bolted to the floor. The top slanted down at a slight angle but was hinged and could open so you could insert your books and pencils and paraphernalia. In the right hand corner of this desk a hole had been cut. You put in your inkwell there or a bottle of ink and using one of those old-fashioned nib pens we had to practice cursive penmanship. What a mess! Now you can watch a YouTube video and learn how to use a nib pen and many people worry that cursive writing is disappearing but uh, for me penmanship in the fifth grade was a catastrophe. When I entered the sixth grade, that was in 1952, and the new wing attached to the old building was open for the first time, everybody was amazed at how bright and shiny it was. And the bathrooms were the basement, which was not in the basement. Those bathrooms were a wonder. Miss Mary Wallace was my teacher. Like Claire Sullivan, uh, she was a member of St. John's, but she played the organ every Sunday at Mass. And in class, she loved to play the piano. Some people thought maybe too much. We sang songs, patriotic songs, religious songs, sentimental songs. And the cut-ups in the class, the imps would delight in putting tacks on her seat. Now her response to misbehavior was a whack of the ruler on the hand. And uh, I have an image of uh, one young man. He was told to put out his hand and he did. And she raised the ruler and brought it down, but he pulled back his hand just as the ruler was about to strike it. It hit the desk, snapped in pieces that flew all, of, all over the place. That was a great amusement for all of us. Miss Wallace did instill in some of us a love of language, words, rhythms, and how to play with them. She had us learn by heart songs, of course, but Bible verses and poems. And she insisted on good rhythm, good diction, good pronunciation, articulation, and clarity. Uh, even today, many uh, of her pupils uh, remember whole chunks of a poem called The Antiseptic Band, Strictly Germproof by Louis Untermeyer. It starts like this. The antiseptic baby and the prophylactic pup were playing in the garden when the bunny gambled up. They looked upon the creature with a loathing undisguised. It wasn't sterilized. It wasn't antiseptic and it wasn't sterilized. So what they did is they decided to clean up the buddy and the poem goes on and finally they took it by the hand and they elected it a member of the prophylactic band, the germ-free band. And to this day, I love wordplay, whether it's Sesame Street or Dr. Seuss or the Colbert Report. The seventh grade was Mr. Moriarty. His classroom was on the right-hand side of the card, down a bit. Air raid drills, fire drills, and on Friday, Dominic Cardulo's art class. That was seventh grade. The eighth grade uh, was held in the room on the left at the far corner of the building, the rear of the new building. The teacher was Mr. Ed Pilot. He was from Framingham and the son of a policeman. Uh, he and I did not mix very well, 
uh, we uh, butted heads often enough. The classroom was one half eighth graders. That was me and one half seventh graders. He had to divide his attention and it made a tough situation worse. Uh, whenever uh, we butted heads, uh, he would march me downstairs to the cafeteria. My mother worked in the cafeteria, and shaming was the form of discipline that he chose. He would tell her uh, everything that I had done, naughty or bad. She would listen, and then she would say what she had to say. My fond memory of eighth grade is the skit that we had to put on. Charlie Karlstrom and I did a spoof of the black and white television show called You Are There. It featured Walter Cronkite interviewing famous personages, people from history. Now, we did an interview of Napoleon and Charlie Karlstrom popped out of the closet uh, and interviewed Napoleon on the battlefield. That was uh, great fun. Kay Smith, Claire Sullivan, Mary Wallace, and Frank Moriarty. Fully half of my teachers were members of the church, uh, and they were personal friends of the family. We visited them in their houses, and they visited us in ours. Kay Smith lived on Grove Street. Claire Sullivan lived on Church Street, Mary Wallace on Maple Street, and Frank Moriarty on Hayden Row before he moved over to Holt Street. And not only we worshiped together, but we shopped together, and my parents socialized with them. Together, they created the bond called Center School. Sadly, we say goodbye to Center School. Let the building stand for uh, what we learned to value in a community and as a community.
fortunate to have Frank Chase uh, be with us. He is a resident of Ash Street, and he's going to talk to us about his experiences going to center school. So we start off, Frank, what year would you have gone to the first grade? I think 1940 would have been my first year. 1940. And at that time, uh, did you walk to school? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I only lived about six houses down from center school. Okay. So uh, all, most of the folks in the center of town, and that's, of course, the center of town, yeah. uh, would walk to school every day. Never got a ride in a bus. Never. Well, you were probably lucky. See, I used to have to ride in a bus and stay there for lunch and, until it was time to go home. But you were able to go home for lunch. Yes, yes. Yeah, and how, how long was that? Like an hour or so? That Can't remember, but I imagine it must have been close to an hour to give us enough time to get to back get to the home. house and yeah. gobble yeah. something down. Now, do you remember who your first grade teacher was? I think it was Miss Stevens, and uh, she was a lovely person. In fact, I loved all the teachers in school in those days. Uh, but she was the one I remember greeting me at the door when I went to the first day of school. Oh, that, that's wonderful. I think they still do that, even with the kids that come on the bus, which I think all of them do, you know. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so. And so you lived right down on Ash Street, so that you didn't have a very long walk if the weather was inclement and or raining or snowing or something like that. You uh, it was just fun to splash in the, the puddles and on the way to school, yeah, the way it was no school. problem yeah. at all. So, uh, and you went home for lunch, and do you remember who your second grade teacher was? I think it was Miss Gray. No, Ms. no, excuse me. I mean, yes, maybe it was Miss Gray. It was. Miss Gray, Ms. 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 that Gray, sound right? Second grade, yeah. And when I had Miss Gray, I got off the bus the last day of school, and I was in tears. And my mother went running to find out what was wrong, thinking I had been hurt or something. And through my tears, I said, I got promoted. <laughs> you I had to just, leave Miss Gray. I had to leave Miss Gray. <laughs> <laughs> now, you must have had Miss Phipps then in the third grade. Oh, yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, Amy Phipps, uh, principal of the, of the school. And uh, a very capable person and... Uh, I think everybody remembers Miss Phipps, and the thing I remember most about her was that uh, I feared her because I'd been told by the big kids, she's got a rat tan in her office. If you ever get called into her office for disciplinary reasons, you're going to get whapped on your knuckles with this rat tan, and it hurts real bad. So. All during my life in center school, I dreaded the thought that I was going to get a rat tan yeah. whipping. And there really was a rat tan, because I've talked to a couple of people that, that had the badge of honor that they did get the rat tan. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't a fable or a, or a story. It was for real. I was trying to remember the other day whether it was real or whether I'd invented this or it was a myth or what. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it was... Yeah. I guess I'm glad to hear it was real. <laughs> and that you didn't get it. Now, uh, is there anything special that you remember? Uh, we were just talking about the swings and the, uh, me the metal uh, uh, hooks that they had for the sides of the swings. Is there anything else that you remember particularly about? I remember the uh, somebody, probably the older kids, said, Make sure you don't stick your tongue on the metal because it'll in the winter it'll freeze to the metal. It'll just rip your tongue right off. Yeah. So I was always <laughs> very cautious about getting my tongue near any piece of metal. Yeah. Which I guess was good advice. Well, absolutely. <laughs> you know, so your, your parents would have been very proud to think that you paid attention to these warnings <laughs> that you got. So. Now, do you remember like? Uh, uh, Flag Day on the Common, or uh, the Memorial Day at the Town Hall. I do. Uh, I remember, of course, Center School is right directly across from the Common, yeah. for those who are not familiar with the old days. 
Uh, and uh, I guess once a year we'd go out and play all sorts of games and contests and things on Flag Day on I the Common. Yeah. Um, I, I remember, I can't remember much about the uh, Town Hall Memorial Day ceremonies. Stevie Bray was the music director. Yes. Yeah, and he used to uh, plan and execute those days at the Town Hall uh, celebration of uh, Memorial Day, and everybody would get dressed up, and they would uh, be up on the stage. It, usually it was like maybe the first or second grades, and they ha all had instruments that they played. Uh, I remember Stephen Bray uh, giving us different instruments to play. Yeah. And I think perhaps some of the more talented, got the more sophisticated instruments, they gave me one of those little triangles, triangles. you know, which I, I don't think you have to have a great amount of the musical skill to play. No, no. Now, uh, you would have been uh, in center school during the Second World War. Yes. And um, I don't know if you remember that... Uh, 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 Bob Nealon was the principal, and he went off to war, and that's when Amy Phipps took over as the interim principal while he was away. And uh, do you remember who the superintendent of schools was? Was John O'Brien the superintendent at that time, or no? Because he, he was at, in at off with the war too. Uh, there was a, a Mr. Sweat. Ah, the name is familiar. I cannot yeah. remember him. And and uh, Mr. Kroll. Mm. They used to say Pop Kroll fell in a hole, and they <laughs> fished him out with a fishing pole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like us kids. <laughs> yeah, you know. And uh, at that time, Hopkinton and Ashland shared a superintendent. So. Oh. Uh, I remember Mr. Sweat lived in Ashland, and uh, he was the superintendent for both towns at, at that time. I didn't realize that. No. Yeah. So uh, is there anything else that you think uh, we would in appreciate hearing? Well, I, I, what I remember most about my center school days was probably my first day in school. Uh, I was really looking forward to it. Uh, Wow, we were six years old now, really grown up, and we were going to go to school and get educated. Yeah. And it was, I was really psyched. So uh, all bright and bushy-tailed, you know, I'd walk for, I'd walk from my house down to the school. And the school, uh, as you well know, has got two entrances on, the, uh, entrance on either side yeah. covered by a portico, and then in the middle is a main door, which I don't know whoever used the main door, but we always entered the side door f uh, be to the south. Yeah. And uh, I remember arriving at the school. Of course, I'd been by the school many times, but I'd never been inside. And I realized out in the back was dirt field, just dirt. Uh, where was the playground and where we'd go for recess and that sort of thing. And I remember swings back there and I think a teeter-totter. Oh, and uh, so I walked down to school and came in the door and I was all ready to, you know, go. And I was met by, I believe, Miss Stevens, who escorted me in. Very friendly. It was a nice, nice feeling. Came into a big hallway and I think on the right was the first grade class. And uh, as I recall, we went into the room there and it had desks and a seat. Uh, and we were told we were the largest class that had ever been in a Hopkins school. We were the largest. We were, I think, 48, if I, the numbers are right, which is small by today's yeah. standards. But in those days, it was a huge class. Uh, I guess I, uh, I I really loved the chance of learning things, and I it was only second to recess. That was always great. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I I I guess that day, while I was all up and excited about it, there were a few of our classmates were kind of weepy, and they'd come with their mothers, and uh, they really 
yeah. didn't like the idea of being separated from yeah. home. It's a big uh, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially, of course, nowadays with kindergarten, they, the kids kind of get acclimated to go into school, uh, to kindergarten, and then when they get to the first grade, they're probably all set, you know, yeah. as far as their, uh, the weepiness and stuff like that. Oh, so, I suppose, yeah, sure. You know, it's, it's a, another plateau for them, you know, so. Now, when I, when I, I had a chance to go to kindergarten, kindergarten, not in the school system, but as a private thing yeah. in those days. And I was really disappointed. All we did was play. Now, that yeah. sounds kind of silly because I love playing. But, yeah. but I was thinking, oh, I'll learn all sorts of stuff in kindergarten. But it really wasn't a, an educational thing so much as just getting along with people. Yeah. Well, that's, I think, what it, you know, when, when the uh, state mandated that each town provide kindergarten, uh, the, uh, they rented space at St. Paul's Church for that first year. I don't remember the second year. And um, there were uh, so many parents that it was their first child and they had high expectations of what this child was going to learn and come, come away with uh, when they were ready to go to the first grade. But part of being in kindergarten is for the social aspects of getting along yeah. with your peers and stuff like that, you know, so. Uh, and there's a certain amount of playing that goes on, I'm sure, you know, but uh, now the uh, kindergarten kids and the first graders will have that beautiful new school to go to. And uh, the, um, the, the committee that organized the layout of that school deserves a lot of credit because it uh, certainly captures a lot of the history of Hopkinton and the history of the marathon and uh, they even have a, a recognition of the Charles River which of course starts right across the yes. street from that yes. you know so uh, it'll be very exciting to uh, see these kids go into that school for the first time so it It'll probably be as exciting as it was in 1929 when the center school opened in January of 29, and uh, that uh, I believe they said that the construction of that school was seventy-one thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah. Wow. So that's uh, we've come a long ways, as they say, you know, <laughs> like that. So. Well, Frank, I appreciate you taking the time to come. And do you have any closing uh, thoughts that you'd like to share? Uh, well, I guess I, I probably ought to uh, uh, recognize or remark on the school. It's been around for 90 years now or so, and it's uh, served the community pretty well, I think, in that we've managed to uh, get through life, most of us, pretty well, and I think the educational value was, uh, and the values of our, our society were inbred in us there to a large degree. So I think it's a pretty successful history for uh, the town, yep. and uh, we're looking forward to the new school with a lot more amenities to it than the old one. Absolutely, and uh, I think that uh, as a community, we can concur that the center school stood us well and now we're on to bigger and better things and we uh, closed the door on center school with a lot of uh, good memories and tremendous education qualities that were instilled in those of us that went there. A lot of good people, a lot of good teachers there. Uh, absolutely and thank you so much for coming and thank share, you, sharing your story. Thank you Mary. Yep.
I'm Paul Danahy, Jr., and I was born in Hopkinton in, uh, on Patriot's Day, 1928, to uh, teenage parents who had uh, married a year before I was born and who ran right into the Great Depression and uh, had enough financial problems where they never actually owned a home, but we rented about uh, six or seven places in Hopkinton until I left in 1948 to go to college in Florida. Um, my memories of center school uh, are very favorable and very pleasant and uh, sometimes even joyous. I can remember so many wonderful things. Uh, beginning in the first grade, 1934, with Miss Lenahan, whose brother was a World War I general in France, as many of you know. And that was her retirement year. She had taught my dad in first grade uh, 20 years before. So um, we would start the day off with uh, good morning to you, good morning to you. We're all in our places with sunshiny faces, for this is the way to start the new day. We would go then into the uh, our Father, which we recited, uh, all of us, except uh, one girl that had to step out in the uh, hall and not participate, either in that or in the salute to the flag. Salute to the flag followed the prayer, and uh, we would put our hands to our breast and hold them outward toward the flag with hands up, so as not to be mixed up with a Nazi salute with the hands down. <laughs> Um, the uh, words um, under God were not yet in the uh, pledge, as you may know, until 1954, I believe. So my favorite classes were, uh, all of my teachers really were very good. Uh, Miss Lenahan all the way through Miss uh, Wallace in the sixth, I guess it was. Mrs. Wood uh, taught uh, Sloyd, uh, which is an unusual word, but it was woodworking for boys, I think, in the sixth grade. and. Um, Reading, writing, and arithmetic, those were, the, uh, those were the key things, and we did learn. Cursive writing, capital letters, small letters, and so on. Uh, in, in 1938, I guess that would have been put me in the fourth grade, the great 1938 hurricane hit. I can remember walking through the common, they let us out at uh, noontime. I was walking down to my grandparents to stay overnight with my dad there at 39 uh, Cedar Street. Uh, one memorable thing, and maybe some others have said this, uh, at Christmas time, John Hancock uh, Company put out a little booklet, and they gave us each one. It had 16 Christmas carols. Uh, we would open the doors to each class, and in turn, each class would sing one of the 16 carols, and the others with their doors open would hear it. <coughs> it was very pleasant, very, very, very nice to do. And um, I had that book until not too long ago. It was a small six or eight inch uh, paperback book, but it had a beautiful picture of a, well, it was an old church scene where the big church lights were on and reflecting out onto the snow and the ground, and it was very Christmassy. So um, I have many wonderful memories of center school, and I'm sorry to hear it's got to go, but uh, things happen, and I understand that. Uh, the rest of my life in Hopkinton until I was 20, uh, we were filled with work, uh, play. I guess we, my friends and I would walk all the hills in Hopkinton, skate on all the ponds available, get in a minimal amount of mischief, I think, and uh, got through it all quite well. I graduated in uh, 1946 from Hopkinton High with 15 other boys and girls, four boys and 11 girls, as I recall. And so that's an interesting, one five is the correct number. <laughs> I then worked a year for the Joe Pines cleanup crew down at the Ashland uh, Chemical Company, which became a super fund that's now covered in, uh, in, in bad shape there in Ashland, and many other jobs uh, during high school, working in the First National Store, on the road department, uh, just anything I could get for work was helpful. Um, other things we did at school were uh, interesting. I can remember uh, Mr. Ward was the uh, janitor, and when you came in in the morning, there was a great smell of pine salt on the floors, very clean. He also did the gymnasium, which is now an office building next door, from one, uh, two doors from the school. And um, he, he was a great guy, and a wonderful family as well, the Wards. Um, Miss Phipps was the principal. And uh, during recess, which came every day around 11 or so, we would uh, 
go out in the, uh, in, the, in the back of the school where we had sort of unorganized uh, recess. And at the end of about 15 or 20 minutes, she'd ring that great big bell she had on the uh, girls' platform on the north side of the school, the ones the girls entered, whereas boys entered on the south side, as you probably already know. Um, I can remember one time uh, a Maypole ceremony on 1st of May, I think, uh, oh, a half a dozen or maybe 10 kids uh, were given these long uh, pieces of paper, uh, crepe paper, I guess, in different colors and wrapped it around uh, in and out uh, of each other and around the pole, and that made quite a bright uh, uh, memory for me. Uh, otherwise, school was uh, great, kids were great. Uh, those who lived outside of town, and we did for a little while halfway to Woodville, would take buses in and bring your own lunch because there was, of course, no lunch room at the school. And um, what else can I say? Uh, when I lived in the central part of the village, my last eight years of uh, Hawkington were at 11 Church Street, where we rented the bottom floor. Um, in January of 1941, I guess that would have put me in junior high school, uh, we lived at 11 Church Street, and my brother and I were allowed to go down and sit on the, uh, the wall of the library with blankets on it, which freezing. And the uh, three-story Hopkinton Bank building, which had uh, Judge Riley on the second floor, a couple of stores on the first floor, and uh, I think the Masonic Hall on the third floor, um, caught fire and burned down, and we watched that whole thing, and it was really cold and very dangerous uh, fire. but. Uh, the Masonic Hall now would be on the same site of that building. And uh, some other things that happened were, well, generally speaking, either during the Depression or World War II, where we had food rationing and uh, uh, drives to pick up uh, old pots and pans. There was a big thing on the common uh, fenced-in thing you could throw those into. And my dad was an air raid warden on for Church Street, which is kind of a joke in a way. They're like the Nazis were going to come bomb Hopkinton, hardly. Um, so anyway, long story short, uh, we uh, swam at uh, Massmanach, skated at the ice pond where they still had the uh, ice being cut by men, about 300-pound uh, blocks that were sent up uh, um, uh, by rope to the uh, top of the uh, building which housed all the ice and they uh, spread uh, layers of, uh, of uh, uh, tree leftovers. What Sawdust. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, they, they, layer by layer. And in the summer when they took them out, they'd wash that off and Bob Ferris would deliver to our house. When I left uh, town in 48, we did not have a uh, electric uh, refrigerator. It was still an ice box and there was no um, hot and hot water running uh, that had to be done on the stove. So there were a lot of things that probably we would consider uh, common today that we didn't have, but that was fine. We had a lot of love and a lot of friends and did, played a lot after school. And uh, two planes crashed in, uh, oh, I guess, uh, 43, which again takes it after center school. And some of us were working in the uh, first national store and asked to get off because the fire truck uh, took everybody who wanted to go and look for the crashed planes on the other side, north side of Saddle Hill, which is in Southboro and down near the uh, brook that runs through there. Anyway, we got over there and uh, I guess there were six planes that, uh, that were naval, but they were AT-6 uh, fighters and they had full 50 caliber machine guns uh, in the wings. And uh, when those two planes hit each other and crashed, the uh, one of the pilots was uh, killed and the other was uh, was uh, made it out only a few hundred feet and he jumped and, and his parachute was still on him sitting up on uh, uh, one of those houses on that street that uh, runs parallel to the brook uh, in South Road, Corderville. Anyway, we uh, all held hands and different people were volunteered and we went up the side of that hill and found uh, different parts of that poor man's body and uh, it was quite an experience as a young teenager. But uh, there were things that happened in town like that, but um, mostly it was very quiet. There used to be a story if you laid out in the middle of Main Street on a Wednesday afternoon, you'd die of old age. A car would never hit you. There were none. <laughs> so, bad joke, but that's the way it was. And so, uh, so it was a great life, and center school was wonderful, and I'm grateful for it. 
when I was in the fourth grade, the uh, big hurricane of 1938 hit very unexpectedly, killing hundreds of people on its way up, uh, but it passed through Hopkinton, did quite a bit of damage to telephone poles, trees, houses, shutters, roofs, and so on. And uh, we were let out of school as the wind picked up uh, on that September day. And I remember walking through the common heading for my grandparents' house at 39 Cedar Street. And uh, I remember the leaves, uh, which were coming down anyway in September, uh, brightly colored, uh, swirling all around the common. And when I uh, got down there, my dad and I spent the night at uh, that house. And one of the windows blew out of the little bedroom that I had upstairs. And uh, I can remember my Aunt Rita, uh, Danahy Fecto, who was a teacher at the school, not mine, however. Uh, we tried to put up, uh, nail up towels over that window that blew out, and instead the uh, gust of wind blew us both back on a little bed that were there, and we were both laughing. But uh, we finally got the towel up over the window, and everybody survived. In uh, Hopkinton, I don't recall there were deaths, but uh, could be. And the aftermath of that was, uh, the CCC boys who had a, a barracks over in Hollister, in uh, Upton rather, uh, came with uh, different saws and different materials to help clean the town up, which was very helpful. That was 1938. When we uh, started in Miss Lenahan's class, first grade, I would say that probably 30 kids uh, were there, and uh, we graduated in 1946 with 15 four boys and 11 girls. And uh, so that was, uh, I don't think there's been that small a class, I'm sure not, since then. Maybe not even before then, I'm not sure. I think the war uh, probably took some boys at 17 out of that class that had parental permission to join up. Um, and there were other reasons, work reasons and so on. I worked out at the Telecron one summer, which was a defense plant in Ashland too, doing a very boring punch press job, but uh, it was good. There was just no men around to take jobs, so they'd take a kid 17 easily and put you right to work. So I, I did that, McGunco Orchards and uh, several other uh, places in, uh, in and around. I, I worked at the mill, the thread mill in Hopkinton, and I was uh, almost 16, but not 16. So uh, I lied and said I was 16 because state law required you to be 16. And you also had to start Social Security payments at that time. So later on in life, when I became Social Security eligible, I told the guy on the phone that I was talking with, I said, I lied when I was 15 and said I was 16. And he laughed and he said, so what? <laughs> he said, it's not gonna matter any the many years you've worked. So lots of thoughts like that. Yeah. So at about uh, 13 or 14 years old, this is after Senate school, a friend of mine, Frank Kennedy, lived on the common. We called him Engine because he loved to be out in the forest most of the time. Um, we worked at McGunco Orchards for Al Green, and uh, we worked all day Saturdays during oh, probably the month of uh, December. And uh, the Macintosh apples had been picked and saved in a cold environment. And our job was to uh, separate them out between medium size and large size, place each apple in a little piece of purple tissue paper, and then take that and put it into a box that was going to be shipped, all separate, each apple separated by little cardboard uh, uh, pieces. Anyway, that was, that was a nice job and uh, worked um, at that same age with Frank in the middle of the night on Sundays going down to uh, Smith & Brown's uh, store down where the uh, gas station is now on Cedar Street and uh, we would get there at 3 a.m. and uh, we would take the last editions of the, the uh, Boston Globe and Herald and so on and slide them into the papers we'd already received during that morning for delivery on Sundays. That was uh, what we did every early Sunday morning about 3 a.m. when they would arrive. Uh, also worked uh, across the street where College Market was. It was a big um, Big, we call it the car barn, but it was where the original trolley cars that came all the way out from Boston through Framingham, Ashland, up to Hopkinton, and then up over to Milford, they would come down uh, the hill uh, in Main Street to that car barn where they would go in, and it was a big turnstile. They would turn around to face the other way for 
the next trip out. Anyway, on cold winter night, we'd, we'd go in there and there'd be some of the homeless or guys drinking too much or whatever, older people, you know, World War I vets, that would sleep by the big boiler and we'd stand and warm our hands by that and it was terrific on a cold winter night. That barn, of course, is long gone as so many other structures in town when I was young. When I, uh, a Duplicon was another one of those things I worked at. And uh, that was Brother Anderson who ran, who made uh, Bakelite uh, pieces. And uh, Al Cunningham, Jake's, uh, Eddie's brother and I, used to work a couple of punch presses there making Bakelite pieces that they sold. Um, Jake Cunningham, who was Al's brother, was really Edward Cunningham, great athlete, and uh, both of them were actually. Um, <laughs> It was a little mischievous, but, but we, had, we had a lot of fun. Jake and I worked on uh, icy cold nights uh, using the, uh, town, the only town dump truck that had a little spreader on the back. And uh, it was full of sand, and uh, we had uh, bags of salt we'd mix with that. And then as, the, uh, as we went over the town roads, Two of us would stand with shovels on each side of the dump truck and shovel it down through the spreader on the state roads, uh, at least, and um, so that you could drive in the morning. You might not get out of your house driveway, but you, if you did, uh, the, the main roads were, would be open in the morning. So we had uh, those kind of jobs, too. And George McBride uh, operated not only the motor grader in those days, which the town owned, but that dump truck. and so. Uh, those were uh, wonderful memories. I worked on the roads in the uh, summer of 49, too, out of college. And um, the road crew was a Mr. Moody, who was kind of a crippled old man from Maine. He was a nice, nice man. And um, Cookie Cumlin, who I'm sure all of you know, stayed on as head of the road department for many years. And uh, Cookie and I would do odd jobs, like on uh, Saturday might come up and we'd, we'd uh, paint the hot houses down on uh, Route 9 the uh, big flower uh, uh, company there that de developed flowers and so on, in two big hot houses. It began with B, but I can't remember it. I'm sure many of you would know who that is. We would, uh, in the hot sun, get up on top of those things and paint all the woodwork. <coughs> Not the windows, but the wood. Anyway, all sorts of great uh, jobs. I think when I was 11, I started selling, um, what was the name of that? Liberty Magazine. Five cents, and uh, they, they give you a whole bunch of them and, and you carry them over your back and go along knocking on houses to see who wanted one. Later I had a really nice paper route when I was 13 and my first bicycle on the west side of town, so I know most every house and every name from, uh, from the west side of town. Anyway, we, we all held lots of jobs you really had to, otherwise at home at night in the Depression, supper was generally something like Spam stew with mother would chop up uh, potatoes, carrots, celery, onions, and several cans of spam. And that would be a very average uh, dinner. There was a place at the town hall that was called the commissary. And during the Depression, the, t the uh, state through the federal government would disperse to the towns um, uh, excess foods of all types. And so I can remember going down. Uh, to the town hall where a man named Willard O'Connell ran that thing. And uh, if you were from poor families, which we were, you could get uh, a couple of pounds of cheese, maybe a five pound bag of, uh, of milk powder, which is just like uh, skim milk today, apricots, some fruits, and so on. And I'd bring those home. And I can remember working at the First National when I was a mid-teen, worked in the meat department. You had to belong to that union, by the way. American, let's see, uh, Meat Cutters and Butchers of America, AFL-CIO. When I was in Tampa and I worked at a, at a Spanish restaurant, uh, I also belonged to the uh, Spanish Waiters Union. I was the only non-Spaniard in it. And that's how I learned a little Spanish. But that goes beyond center school, so I'm, I'll try to stick to center school. Um, my experience in town uh, during the Great Depression was one of uh, uh, financial difficulties for the family, but uh, uh, we didn't lack in love, and uh, my brother David and my sister Joanne also attended uh, uh, center school. Uh, they were behind me a little bit, and uh, so I now have uh, 
let's say I'm, uh, I'm 90 now, so I have um, a wife with me for 66 years now, and uh, three wonderful children and four wonderful grandchildren. And I would love them to know about these experiences I had at center school and many other things in Hopkinton. I belong to the Historical Society and, uh, and I have a number of cousins that lived not just in Hopkinton, but in eastern Massachusetts, and I, I try to keep up with what's going on in Hopkinton. Uh, as they used to say, you can take the boy out of the town, but you can't take the town out of the boy, and that's me. And I stay very interested in Hopkinton. When I left, uh, I went to BC after working a year at the chemical company and uh, hitchhiked from the common day after day, both ways. There was no transportation money two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and that was how I did BC the first year. I got a, a um, scholarship offer at that point uh, to come to uh, Tampa, Florida, which I did, and I've stayed here, and this is my home that I'm talking to you from. And um, I wish you all uh, a wonderful uh, life, what's left of it, <laughs> for you and all of us. And uh, we hope to talk to some of you soon. Anyway, it was a great time, I enjoyed it all, and thank you for listening. Ladies, all for coming, and I'm going to let East one of you introduce yourself and tell us what year you went to center school. Jean? I'm Jean. Shall I give my maiden name? Sure. Janine Scalata, and I believe it was 1935 I was in first grade. Went to first grade. Mm. And L Louise, what? how about you? I think, Louise Mayer, and I think I was in there in 30. Three. 33, I 1933. Yeah, yeah, two years yeah, before me. Yeah, I turned Charlotte. And Charlotte, yeah. I'm Charlotte Penthony and I started first grade in 35. I would think. Yeah. yeah. In 1935. Yes. 
So we're here to talk about your experiences going to center school, because as we all know, the center school, which opened in 1929 in January, uh, is going to be closing in June, and they're going to be having a celebration on September 15th to close center school. And before we close it, we want to collect all the memories the good and the bad that you have of going to center school. So tell us, Jean, where did you live when you went to center school? I lived on Fenton Street, which is about, probably a quarter of a mile, and I would walk to school and come home for lunch. We had an hour for lunch. The mill whistle would blow at 12, and then it would blow again at 1. It was means we had to be back to school. And you want to tell everybody where the mill was located? Right at the corner of my street. Uh, it is now, well, it used to be a uh, thread mill, we called it. Yep. Yeah. I know what's called. It was called. the thread mill. Yeah, it was the thread mill. It's still yeah. the thread mill. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I don't know. Kindergarten. No, I'm kidding you. <laughs> it's, it's uh, I think, executive suites or something. I guess it is. It's there. still there. It was an yeah. old factory. Yeah, and it had four stories to it, didn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And now there's two? Two stories, yeah. It. I think there's two. All right, and Louise, where did you live when you went to center school? Not far from where I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I lived two, heaps, two houses up. At, it was my great-grandmother's house. On Hayden Row? Yeah, on Hayden Row Street. On yeah. Hayden Row. And it you? would be 70 Hayden Row. And you yeah. walked to school. I walked to school, yeah. And, and what came, came home, home like Jean did for lunches. Yep. And um, I've been away from, <laughs> have not lived in that house for that, I mean, many years in that area. Yeah. But um, the family has. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And how about you, Charlotte? Where did you live when you went to um, school? I lived at the corner of Grove and Hayden Row. Yeah. Well, there used to be a house there, and they tore it down when they built the school. Yeah. And, and you walked to school? I walked to school. And I didn't come home at noontime, though. I stayed with, and brought my lunch. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, was, that would have been quite a walk from <coughs> it was. school. Yeah. yeah, in the winter especially. Oh, I know, I know. Well, I was always a bus pupil. So I had to bring my lunch every day. I didn't have the luxury of going home for lunch, which probably was good as far as my mother was concerned. You know? right. so, and so when you went home for lunch, you had an hour, Jean, to, yes. to go home and, and come back. eat and come back. And well, that was a nice breakup. Do you, do you remember what time you went to school, like 9? I think it was around 9, yeah. and we got out at yeah. 3. At 3, yeah. Think, yeah. But when we lived at the lake, I used to have to have a bus, yeah. and then I'd bring a sandwich, yeah. and we could just buy milk. That's and right. you had to bring yeah. your own sandwich. Now, when you say you had a bus, did you, uh, was that a, a regular bus? or? <laughs> No, it was a station wagon, yeah, and Lonnie, Lonnie Pine, Pine. Oh, drove it, who, yeah. who's Adi's and Jeff's father. Yeah. And, um, and he would pick up, go up the hill and get uh, the Botanians and stop at the corner of Oakhurst. We had to walk to the end of the street. Yeah. And on rainy days, he would be nice and drive us in the street. <laughs> Even though we do that today. No, I know. No. It was just there were only probably four or five of us on the on the bus. Yep, yep. Now, Louise, tell us about your your memories of being at Center School and the teachers and uh, the. Pl I, I don't know whether they had a playground then or, or not. Yeah, well. I can remember the te first grade we had Miss Lenahan. I did too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second grade Miss Kelly. Was she, no. They were. I bet she had retired then. Mrs. N Mrs. Neelan? No, Kay Smith. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Third grade um, Amy Phipps. Yes. Who was the principal? Yep. yep. Fourth grade. Oh, we got lucky. We got a young lady. We, these were very older women, ready for retirement. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then we had Dolly Bent in, in fourth grade. In fourth grade, oh, yeah, that's right. Fifth grade, I had Margaret. Um, what's her name down on oh. Pleasant Street? Margaret 
Oh, oh, they taught her, her sister used okay. to teach. Madigan? One taught, one played the the Mar 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 Madigan. Margaret Madigan. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Margaret okay. Madigan. Oh gosh, oh, I, we had Miss Wa Miss Wallace. Yeah. Miss Wallace was right. sixth grade. Yeah. And then uh, you went to the high school for seventh grade. Eighth, eighth and uh, seventh, yeah. and eighth. seventh, seventh and eighth. eighth. Yeah. yeah, junior yeah. high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I had May Halley. Yes. Yeah. And yep. Dolly, Dolly, no. Bent? What, what was her name? Dolly Bent? Dolly Bent, no. No, we had Did her. Did we have Miss Harris? We had her in center school. Huh? I can't remember. We had Miss Harris there, too, didn't we? Yeah, but the in junior grades? high, we didn't. Oh, no, in junior she, high. I can't remember her High name. school, yeah. I thought I had her before. She was no. a friend of May Halley's. Yes. Jiggle, jiggle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Charlotte, do you remember who your teachers were? You said K. Smith. Oh, I wrote them all. Down. I should have remembered. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> I know. Uh, we had Miss Lenahan in the first grade. Yeah. We had K. Smith in the second. Amy Phipps in the third. Uh, Miss Coonan. Oh. Who? In the fourth. Oh no. Miss um, Madigan. Madigan. The that's, that's who I was. Yeah. And Bernie Nealon. Oh, that oh. I knew we had her. And, yeah. we, and Mary Wallace. Every so yeah, often. Yeah, Mary we Wallace. Her, that's too. Yeah. 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 And, and how about you, Jean? Same as Charlotte. Same. We were in the same class. You were in the same class. Yeah. But I remember mm. Mrs. Nealon. Uh, she wasn't Mrs. Nealon then, but she got married while she was yes. teaching. Yeah. And Bob was in the service. Yeah. So she would she would be gone a lot because she'd go with him then. Yeah. So we had a lot of different yeah. teachers yeah. that yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. Right. But I'll remember. I can remember that. Well, we could just elaborate that Bob Nealon, who was the town clerk here for many years, was also the principal right. at the center yeah. school. I didn't and know And then that. he went yes. off to war. Yes. And yep. he yeah. ended up being injured in the, in the Second World War and mm -hmm. had some, I think he had something on his face, his injuries on his face. Gee, I don't remember. I don't remember that. Oh. No. Did he lose Never an show. eye? Did what? Yeah. Did he lose an eye? I, that's what I'm thinking, Charlotte, yeah. but I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure. I never knew yeah, something, that. something like that. <coughs> yeah. something. But then yeah. when you say Miss Sullivan ended up marrying Bob Nealon, yes. and she ended up being Mary Nealon, who was also the town clerk. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, now, uh, there must be some specific memories that you have of center school. Uh, some things that happened. Uh, now this is, we're approaching the Memorial Day weekend, and did you have any Memorial Day yeah. celebrations or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. In yeah. the Can common, you, in, right? Right. right. Yeah. yeah, we did. Yeah. Can you some? elaborate on it, Jean? I can remember we had to learn <clears throat> all the songs, uh, you know, Irving yeah. Berlin songs and those, yeah. and we'd have a little uh, celebration like over in the common you remember oh well, we always they, had something yeah going we did on in yeah the common. they yeah. had yeah a, a veteran of I, I don't know what war it was way back and he used to come out on the porch at that corner house of the corner of Hayden Row and the common yeah and he sat with his hat on I can remember Bob Lavoie and I were talking about that one day Oh, and hmm. Bob, Bob knew what war he was. I can't remember really. Oh, and uh, we he would just sit there, and we would sing the Star Spangled Banner, and have the flag there. Yeah. The flag, yeah. yeah, and honor him. Well, it, it would it would have to have been World War One. Well, General Nealon, General Linehan was a gem, general. That was the yeah. teacher. Right, yeah, was it him? No, no. Because no. they lived in the corner of Fenton and Ash. Yeah. It, I didn't did. know him, but my mother t always told me he was a general and he lived in Hopkins. I, I remember there was a general, Neil. Uh, that was him. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. Mm. did he live in that big house there with the big porch? The, the one, you know, uh, Fenton Street and Ash oh, on the corner. Oh, It was um, oh, uh, where uh, Eleanor Creed lived. Yes, Eleanor Creed lived there afterwards. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No, that wasn't him. <laughs> So, t so tell me about uh, any other experiences besides the Memorial Day celebrations. I can remember when I was in set to school, going out onto the common with flags. And, yeah. Uh, 
and then I remember we, uh, when I was in set to school, we had a Memorial Day celebration at the town hall, and Stevie Bray was the music director. Yes, really, and yeah. everybody would have a little po poem or something that they'd oh. say, you know. On Memorial Day? On Memorial Day, yeah. Oh, we had, oh, yeah. Yeah. We had and, them each week. Uh, Stevie Bray, we'd, we'd all dress up, you know, first graders, and uh, stand up on the stage at Town Hall <laughs> and, and put, put out our performance and stuff like that. Right. So uh, things have changed, and I, I don't know. I haven't heard about them having any celebration on the Common this year for Memorial Day. No, I haven't. Maybe there's uh -huh. too many children to right. track them right. across the street there, you know. Right. So. I, I remember Christmas time having the Christmas carols in the center school. Oh, yes. Right. John, John Hancock used to give all the students the little books little with all the Christmas carols. Right. Yes. Picture of the church yep. in the front. And they, we would have, they'd open, every class, there was the four classes downstairs and four rooms upstairs. Yep. And each class was assigned a certain carol and we'd practice it with their harmonicas <laughs> yeah. and on tomb. And then the day before we got out of school, I suppose before the Christmas holiday, all the doors were opened. Oh, I love that. And we'd all sit and listen. Each one would sing their song and you could oh, hear it through the oh. whole. Oh, remember that yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. They sang through. Do you remember the dirigible that went over? Oh my gosh, do I remember? Yes, we were out at recess. Right. We all went crazy. We went out of our minds and we chased they let the dirigible. Us go out. Oh my heavens. And we ran we, all over the place. Right across up the common, over over to the, the where the church, where, over the, the, was there a fence? We almost got yes, over there where, was the, a fence. where the cemetery. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, and Miss. Bips with her bell ringing to get us in, and we just kept, we, we were going to chase it. Oh my gosh, tell your story. You dare tell the end of your story. No, no it wasn't no, me. But, but no, but she, she said, get somebody. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. she slapped her across I didn't the face. see that, but she finally got us under control oh, to get back in the, the whole well, background teachers, went up. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you went, oh, no. Yeah, you don't remember that. No, I don't. I don't know why. I don't. Maybe what you were that? absent. Maybe, Maybe it was sad. Was. <laughs> You'd never forget that. It, it looked like it was going to land, and we thought we could really fall, catch right. up with it. I now, that's the thought. one that blew up, too. Yes, yeah. the one that oh, burned. Wow, that was yeah. A, yeah. Is that the, the one that burned? Yeah. 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 In that New Jersey? Yeah. 37, yeah. was it? 37 that happened. Gosh, I don't I remember. Think it was 37. <laughs> I remember it going over and all of us running. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what an experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah, poor Miss Phipps. Ring and she, you know that bell? Ring, ring, ring. Oh my God, she was my out of my, my husband remembers her as uh, the one that put the rat tan Ms. on his Phipps. fingers. Oh, All <laughs> right. She <laughs> said, hold your hand uh, out. Yeah. Yeah. Most, yeah. Mostly the boys. Yeah, yeah. 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 she put pull, me in the corner. She's hit him with a ruler. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. if yeah, they pull the hand back, the they'd get a couple of extra yeah. wax. Yeah. Bob Lavoy got, uh, used to uh, talk about that. The first, oh, talk I don't about remember, that. but he would get him from Lenahan, the first grade. Yeah. Oh. yeah. My, we've come a long way, haven't we? The boys yeah. used to like to pull pranks too. Remember yeah. that? Didn't one of them put a skunk in the in the dead skunk in the fur, furnace one time? Oh, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. It was. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it was, they lived on the corner, Kennedy, remember her friend? Oh, Kennedy? Yes. Engine. 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 He was always doing something. Oh, he was, oh, he was yeah. a riot. Yeah. yeah, he was fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, He's the one that also lit the carbon on fire. Remember he went up the path with a can of gasoline? Oh, that would be him. Yeah. And what did and he set on fire? The common. Uh, the carbon. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, and he went up the, the, the walk way there with a can of gasoline, and then he went back and lit a match, and the whole thing went up. <laughs> and, and that's why they called him Engine Kennedy, I guess. <laughs> oh. I, I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah. gosh, yeah. Well, do you have any other stories that you'd like to share? Or? Eugene, you wanted to mention about your mother being the secretary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, my father was a was a painter. He and during the winter, 
he d didn't have a lot of work. So she always worked, and she, uh, she was always really good at math, so she, she became a part-time school, first school secretary they had in Hopkinton for the superintendent. And she had, he was superintendent from at, for Ashland and Hopkinton. Yeah, Mr. Remember they Swat. had the same Mr. one? Mr. Sweat? Yes. And then, then she worked for Jack O'Brien. Yeah. And uh, until until she retired, yeah. 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 Good for her. She was the first one. Yeah. So that, that was a good many years ago, too. Yes, it was, yeah. yeah. That yeah. was before women worked yeah. a lot, too, I, yeah. you know. Yeah, I remember Mike Ward, who worked as a oh, custodian. Oh, yes, right. Lived yeah. next door. Kitty's and the father. Yeah. He was such a nice man, and he used to bring Kitty lunch every day. And I so envied her. He'd come knock at the door, and the teacher would go over and let him in. And I would say, Kitty is, she would be so embarrassed. <laughs> Here I thought how lucky she was in yeah, all this her attention. Lunch. But she says, oh, I used to have a fit, she says. <laughs> now, Charlotte, when you ate your lunch, you ate it in the classroom? Yes. Yeah. Right. No, no, I think we were in the. You, you, um, she did what? Uh, we ate our lunch. No, we did eat it in the class. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. didn't yeah. ever. Yeah. Well, cafeteria. And there was right. yeah. there was no cafeteria, no gym. No. Nope. We played out. <laughs> I can remember playing out in back of the school. The playground. The playground yeah. in right. back. Yeah. 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 We, well, yeah. We had good fun out yeah. there because we right. could play hopscotch. Yeah. Uh, and and. Um, Bring your jump rope. To jump rope. Yeah. 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 And what was the one we'd do? We'd go around the well, No, what was it? We'd get up and sing some song and put our arms on and go around. <laughs> ring it, ring around the rose. <laughs> Rattlesnake. Oh, uh, I don't know that. Well, one. It'll come back to me. But we had the the hurricane in '38. Oh yes. And the day after the hurricane, with all the trees down, my mother sent my. Sent you to school. Sent me to school. My brother and I. To was school. there school? Yeah, there was. We were, no, there was there no wasn't. school. No. You were the only two. Ones but the trees were all down yeah. around the school and in the common. Yeah, yeah. That was quite a hurricane. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I th I thank you, ladies, for coming, <coughs> and uh, this this is the beginning of a series that we're going to be running of people that went to the center school and what their recollections are. So I uh, um, so appreciate you coming and sharing your memories of center school. Uh, it's really the end of an era. And uh, they will mo look forward to the opening of the new marathon school oh, up right. on Hayden Row. And uh, I saw some pictures today that uh, it looks like it's absolutely beautiful. I understand it Yeah, is. and they're going to be having a public tour on June 9th. Oh, oh nice. From 1 to 3.30, so if you'd like to go, uh, you know, it'll be first come, first serve, and you can have, have a tour before there's right. any children in the building. So. Right. That'll so nice. thank you again for coming and sharing your stories. Well, and you're welcome. welcome. Mary. Uh, we, need, we need to, uh, as we move into the future, we need to always remember the past. And it's so such fun to talk about old times yeah. in Hopkinton and how uh, uncomplicated life was then. So thank oh, you right. again. That's right. true. Thank yes, you. Yeah, it was.
Today we have the pleasure of uh, talking with John Mark Thomas, who uh, now lives on the Cape, but grew up on Ash Street. And uh, he's going to talk to us about his experiences of going to the center school. So John, what year would you have gone to the center school? Mary, I think I started in center school in 1947. 1947. And I was in the fifth grade. Okay. And who was your fifth grade teacher? Miss Lavoie. Miss Lavoie. Right. All right. And uh, where you lived close to the school, you walked. Yes. To the set of school. Seven houses. Seven houses. And you uh, did, at that time, did you go home for lunch? I think so. Oh. I think some days we went home for lunch, and some days I think we brought a lunch. We brought there a lunch. There was no cafeteria. No. See, see, I was a bus pupil living on Wood Street, so I had to take my lunch every day uh, to school. And Where did you eat it? I, uh, I really don't remember. To be, must have eaten it at our desk. Must have, because I don't remember there being a cafeteria. Yeah, no, I think the cafeteria was built uh, in the uh, early 50s, that they, uh, the cafeteria used to be in the basement level. Mm -hmm. Now, is there anything that you remember about the specific about being at Central School? And well, you were there until you were in the seventh grade? That no, I was there. Uh, as a matter of fact, Mary, I was only there one year, and that was the fifth grade. Okay. And then in the sixth grade, we moved to the town hall. Town hall, yeah. And went to school in the town hall. And Miss was Miss Wallace your Ms. teacher. Miss Wallace was my teacher, right? Yep. yep. She okay. used to live down on um, Ma Maple Street. Maple Street, right? Yep. Yes. Yes. And then for the seventh grade, we moved to the high school. Yep. Yeah. So you moved to the high school that would have been the high school on Main Street? Yes. Oh, okay. And then you moved up in 56, no. you moved up to the new high school. No, I never went to the new high school. Um, for my senior year, I went to Framingham High School. Oh, I see. Okay. But my sister, Suzanne, went to the new high school. Yep. And yep. that was built right around, must have been 1956. 56 in January that opened. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, uh, your tenure at the center school was not very long. No, one no. year. Yeah. And uh, what about like recess and uh, any special occasions that you recall? Well, we had recess out in back and it was just, I think there was a swing set and it was just gravel. Gravel, yeah. And I don't remember anything special about it. We did go to, we went to gym at the gym, and which what, was down the street. What Ash Street? On Ash Street, two, well, one built, the Curtis house was it, next to the school. Yeah. And then was the gym. Yeah. And we used to go to the gym, and the physical ed teacher was Chick Walsh. Correct. Remember? I certainly do. And he was also the football coach. Yes, that's right. And then when we got up into junior high and high school, Marion Harris was the coach for the girls. For the girls, yeah. yeah. She, she had such a winning record of the many years that she was here. Did she? Yes, she did. She, was, she came to teach in Hopkinton in 1935. Oh, I didn't know she'd been here that long. Yeah, and she... Uh, I think she was uh, maybe the only or uh, one of a few uh, female science teachers. She, she taught the four sciences. She did. I remember that. You know, so uh, she made quite a record for herself. She was a wonderful teacher. And, she was a good teacher, yeah, yes. So. She was a good person. She and was fun now to be your with. sister Suzanne. Uh, is how many years younger than you? She's three years younger than I am. All right, so she would have gone to the center school then when she was in the second or third grade? For, uh, yeah, probably the second grade. Yep. Yeah, yep. and she went all she went through all the way through center school. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
So, and uh, do you have any recollection of special events like Flag Day or Halloween parades out on the common? We did dress up for Halloween, and I, I can't remember too much about it. I don't, I don't think we had much of a celebration for Halloween in, the, in Center School. Okay. Center School was pretty serious business. It was. You know, there wasn't much, um, there weren't many things to do that were fun. Well. It was serious business. That's true. School, school uh, in those days was not to be uh, a happy occasion unless no. you made it a happy occasion. No, it no. was, it was not, uh, I don't remember dressing up in costumes or anything like that, like my kids did, you know, yeah. in, in elementary school. No, it was very serious. Now, what about a Flag Day celebration? Do you recall that at all on the common? I don't. I'm sure there must have been one yeah. Up yeah. on the common. They, they, this year, they had a Flag Day celebration, which was the last one for the center school. And... Uh, the other thing that they did this year, which was really quite emotional for, for the kids, is um, the senior class, of which there were 275 graduates, and I don't know how many came, but uh, the, after they had their dress rehearsal for graduation, they walked from the high school to the center school to say goodbye to the kids. Oh, really? And all the little kids, I mean, this is just uh, kindergarten and first grade, they stood out and they they did the hands out like the football players do and yeah. the baseball players. And uh, it must have been quite emotional for the graduates to uh, be the the last class to say farewell to the center, to school, center school and like that. So uh, lots of people have lots of memories of center school. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of them don't want to be interviewed and talk about it. Oh, really? But we have been able to put together a, quite a collage of interviews and photographs uh, from people that uh, went to center school, from people that uh, I have an interview coming up next week of a gentleman that uh, graduated from high school in 1942. Wow. And went right into the, the military following graduation. So uh, there's been lots of, um, you know, important things, fun things, and uh, great memories uh, of Center School. And uh, fortunately, that building, uh, the original Center School, will always be maintained. Uh, as another use for the town, but uh, it will it will always be there. Well, I certainly have good memories of it. Um, I remember the superintendent's name was Mr. Sweat. Sweat, that's right. Remember him? Yep. He walked with a limp, if I remember. That's right. Um, it's funny how you can remember those things from so long ago. And yeah. His successor was Bob Neeland. He was the principal. Oh, he became the principal. Bob Neely did, and right. then he went off to war, and uh, Miss Phipps was the acting principal while uh, Mr. Neely was away in the service. Oh, I didn't know that, because Miss Phipps was the principal when I went to school yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and uh, Mr. Neely, uh, then when he came back from the war, and he had some serious injuries. Yes, he did. Yeah, and when he came back from the war and recovered from his injuries, uh, he went back to be the principal mm -hmm. uh, of the center school. So, uh, well, I remember meeting him and knowing him, and he got to be friends with my parents. Um, I remember he had a lot of kids, and I remember when he moved over to Hayden Row into that big house. He, the Curly House. He, yeah, the Curly House. He lived in a small house on um, uh, Church Street. Yeah, right next to St. John's Church. Right. Yeah. And then he moved to the Curly House over there because he yeah. had a lot of kids. He did. I think he had eight children. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he, was a, he was a great guy. He was. Uh, he had a nice personality. Yes. Like that. So. Yes, he did. And then after Mr. Sweat was the 
superintendent, and Mr. Sweat was the superintendent for both Ashland and Anna, Hopkins. Yes. And after him, there was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Kroll. I don't remember him, but I remember Jack O'Brien. Oh, yes, yeah. Who was superintendent. I think he was principal of a high school for a while, and First, then they made him... Yeah, superintendent. Superintendent. Yep. 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 And he retired in about... I'm going to say about 1975. Uh, okay. And he went on to be uh, the superintendent with the a new high school uh, having been built in, in the 50s. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come and talk My pleasure. about the Center School. And uh, it's very good to see you after all these years. Good to see and you, Mary. And welcome back to Hopkinton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Today we're going to be talking to Roy Stratton. Now, Roy, what year were you born? Ah, what year was I born? 19... 1924. 1924. 19th. The 19th of September. Oh, my So I'll be, uh, you know... you got a birthday coming up yeah. then. We'll have to remember that. So as far as I can figure out then, you were six years old in 1930. Yeah. And that's when you went to set to school. That's right. And why don't you tell us where you were living when you went to Centre School? Nine, nine Mount Auburn Street. You were yeah. living on Mount Auburn Street. Yeah, not just a street away. Yeah, I know. And you, so you walked yes. to school. Yeah. And do you remember who your teacher was? Uh, the first grade, I'm not sure. Was it Mrs. Lenahan? Miss Lenahan. Miss Lenahan, Miss, yeah. Miss, yeah. Yeah. She yeah. lived on Ash Street. Yes. Yeah. And in the second grade, do you remember who you had? Uh, no. No. <laughs> All right. So you were in the first... I remember Dolly Bent. Do Dolly <laughs> Bent. Yes, she lived in Woodville. Fourth grade, right? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. She was before for my time. 
Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. She was quite a girl. Yeah. <laughs> so then you would have walked home for lunch. Yeah. And walked back again uh, yeah. after lunch. Where uh, so many people, like myself, we were bus pupils. Oh, yeah. So we had to bring our lunch. Yeah. Now, uh, is there anything special that you remember about the center school? Amy Phipps. She was there. <laughs> no, she was third grade, I think. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And did did you have the opportunity of having her use the rattan on you? Uh, no, but I know I can remember. Uh, we used to, when we were leaving the school, uh, she would walk us out. Yeah. To the to their common, all right, and if we weren't towing our lot the line, she grit her teeth. <laughs> well, that's the one thing that that's outstanding. I, I don't remember too much about actually being in the school, and I was not a good student. I was uh, weak in math. Oh, all yeah. right, and. Uh, Mrs. Kirby, they used to call her Mag. Maggie Kirby. Mag Kirby. Yeah, she yeah. lived on A Street. And she always started her class off with, uh, she would ask somebody to go and get a glass of water for her. Oh, really? Because she would get dry throat. Yeah. And she asked Millie Cumlin, uh -huh. hey, would you kindly go get me a glass of water? Yeah. And Millie says, Go get it yourself, you old coot. Oh. And uh, I don't think she got the rat to hand. No. But <laughs> it wasn't received too well. I wouldn't think so, no, knowing her, because I had Miss Phipps. Oh, did you? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, knowing her temperament, I don't think that went yeah. over too well. You no. Know, so. so you went home for lunch, and uh, did you... Uh, were the people that lived around you that you walked to school with? Yeah, the Ro the Robesons. <laughs> the Robesons lived down just out just before the Protestant Cemetery. Okay. And there was, uh, I think there was about eight of them. Yeah. And Cameron was in my class. Oh, yes. Cameron Robeson. Yeah. 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 Now, is that was Mary... Was one of the Mary Robinson? Yeah. Yeah. Roy? No, not no. Roy. No. no, different family. There was Hugh and Colin and uh, I don't know, there was. Yeah. I can remember we used to go down in the field uh, where they lived and uh, they had an old car down there <laughs> and uh, they had uh, ruts all through the field yeah. that they had made on purpose. Yeah. And we would, a bunch of us would get into the car and we'd ride around the circle, you know, in there. And we had a jolly time. <laughs> oh, I bet you did, yeah. Now, when you, you uh, according to my research, you graduated from high school in 1942. That's right. And Steady prep. Yeah, that's right, steady <laughs> prep. Now, did you go into the service right after high school? Or? Yeah. Yeah. In December, I think, um, 1943, yeah. Okay. December 43. And what branch of the service were you in? Uh, the Navy, in yeah. In the Navy. Yeah. And uh, you were in all during the Second World War? Well, yeah. 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 I got out in uh, uh, 46. 46. I got married in 47. Yep. Yeah, right after I come home. Yep. Married a Westboro girl. Well, that's all right. You're allowed. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I, um, how we met was, uh, I was, um, she was taking care of, uh, her name was McKay, Maris McKay. Yes. I remember. And she was taking care of Bobby Bowers, uh, her uh, yes, yeah, sister's little boy. And I was out on a tree, hanging on a tree, <laughs> and she walked by. 
And I said, well, <laughs> let's go develop it or something. <laughs> and I did. And we were married for 64 years. Oh, congratulations. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Is there anything else would you like to talk about in your family? Uh, you t I know you had two brothers. Yeah, yeah. Alvin was uh, my oldest brother. Yeah. And he was quite a sportsman. Yeah. And he died when he was only. 46. Yeah. He worked for the Taylor Brothers, uh, landscape and, you know, arborist, and they were taking, he was running a uh, front end loader, and uh, he was, they put a, a, a boy there with him, and he was trying out a new method of moving the lo these logs, and uh, there was an embankment and the boy was supposed to warn him. If he got too close, well, he got too close and that thing tipped, tipped over. over and it crushed him. Yep. And he then, died. And then your younger and brother. Mer Merrill yep. just passed away last year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Merrill was sort of a historian. Yeah. His house was full of books. <laughs> yeah. And you, would you like to talk about your children? Yeah, I have a three children. Yeah. I have uh, Janice, who is my oldest girl, and uh, she lives in the town that I can't remember. <laughs> Where? Charlton. Charlton? Charlton. Charlton, Charlton. Charlton. Yeah. yeah. She just bought a house out in Charlton. Yep. Yeah. And uh, she comes to see me at the senior, at the uh, Beaumont. And Sue, which is uh, Phil's Wife. Wife, yeah. Yeah. Who comes very often. Yeah. And, <laughs> and my son is a Roy Jr., who I don't see very much of. Oh, okay. But he's going through a marriage problem and so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I guess if you were to sum up your life here as a born and bred Hopkintonian who attended center school, how would you do that? <laughs> I suppose I could say lucky. <laughs> lucky. But uh, I was born in Ashland. Oh, well, that's all right. We only lived there one year. Yeah. And then we come up here to smell the free, the, the clean air. The clean air. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, I certainly appreciate you being here and taking the time to talk with me. Yeah. And I'll... Uh, I didn't know it was going to be this easy. This easy? Well, you know, I contacted many people and they were very resistant to do the interview. Yeah. But I'm so glad that you were able to do it yeah. because you really represent the beginning of the center school. Yeah. And uh, I'm so happy that we were able to connect yeah. and uh, have you explain to people about going to center school. Yeah. Th thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.